Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks, and by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2015. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host, George Gilbert, our new big data analyst. And of course, we have our, our premier guest, Rob Beard, the CEO of Hortonworks, Cube alum, king of the show here. Hortonworks is really headlining with other ecosystem partners. The show, great to have you here on the Cube again. It's great to be here, and thank you guys for bringing the Cube here. It's been uh, the, the the feedback's always terrific, and uh, always uh, welcome to have you here. We really appreciate your partnership. You recognize the value that we bring with the Cube. We recognize what you guys have done in the community. It's an open source ethos. Share. And that's, that's stuff right. will come that's back, right? right? And and the cube is the gift that keeps giving <laughs> all, all all year round too, because yeah. uh, it's just a great uh, great place to go. Our consecutive uh, Hadoop summits has been a pleasure. Let's get back down to business. Your keynote was fantastic. I thought you were had that John Chambers vibe. He gave his last keynote speech last last night as the CEO at Cisco. Certainly, he'll be on as kind of executive chairman, uh, handing the baton to Chuck Robbins. So so you had a spring to your step. Was it because you were just feeling good? I mean, it's a packed house. What's 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 getting you pumped up here? I mean, the show's packed, yeah. but there seems to be like, the market's in transition, about to explode in a positive way. Where are we? You know, it, it, it's great to have our customers, our partners, everybody here together, but you know, we, we've all worked really, really hard for, you know, for a lot of years, three, four, five years, to be in the opportunity to hit this inflection point. And, and, and that inflection point's now. Hadoop has really crossed over and it's, it's absolutely become an enterprise viable data platform. Right? The, the architecture has made it to the other side and really innovated into, into being able to address multiple kinds of use case and workloads and batch interactive in real time. And the ecosystem has really, really uh, not only embraced, but is now thriving and, and pulling yeah. Hadoop, and we're seeing that pull market happen. We're seeing real production use cases of yeah. mission critical apps going, and most importantly, we're now at a point where as we've hit that inflection point, and this is why I'm so excited, the real value's coming. Yeah. And, and we've not just built, built tech to build tech, create a new space, it's actually transforming the IT Landscape and how data is going to be managed for the next 15 years. You know, and Rob, that's what's so exciting to you us. You know, Rob, we were talking, Dave Vellante pinged me this morning, saying, hey, what's the vibe of the show? And you know, we have also, obviously all this, our speculations and we're opining, but I said, Dave, it's packed, it's energies here, but we talk about this transition market, the tide's pulling out for this huge wave that's coming. So you mentioned an inflection point, I want to drill down on that. Because I think that's really what I see, is that the tide is pulling out. The old market of analytics, processing engine, all the nuts and bolts, speeds and feeds, certainly foundational set. Sure. You, you would agree, okay. Absolutely. If you, if you believe that, the tide's coming, the next big wave is cloud. We're seeing yeah. massive cloud innovation, mm -hmm. accelerate containers, orchestration. This is DevOps. I mean, yeah. Hadoop is DevOps. Sure. So this is now coming together. What is that, I mean, on the inflection point specifically, how low are we? I mean, because we can debate where on the inflection point kick up we are. If this cloud wave hits in strong, how, what do you see for that path? What is, what's going to happen next? Because it's going to go up, right? Well, it's it's going to go inflection. way up, but, but, but it's even bigger than all of that. And, and that's what's so exciting. And that the entire data architecture is evolving rapidly. And the data layer is going to replatform, and this time on multi multi dimensions. Not only is it going to replatform away from the standard siloed transactional systems, which are great for doing what they do, but Hadoop creates a central architecture that all workload types, batch interactive, can, can come together and bring all data sets into central and all the efficiencies that come with that. But what makes it even more powerful is now you can deploy data across any deployment architecture that fits the workload the best, whether that's on-premise, Windows or Linux, whether that's in a virtualized, or whether that's in a cloud or a multi-cloud architecture. Mm -hmm. 
So you, you so you get not only a modern data architecture, but a modern deployment architecture that 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 will make it transparent where that data is on which deployment architecture. So I was talking with Lou Tucker at OpenStack last week, two weeks ago. Um, Lou Tucker, a legend in the industry, uh, now at Cisco is at Sun, and I'm like, Lou, let's let's try to. Um, tell the story for the common folks out there that know tech and try to uh, put an inflection point wealth and industry creation capability. So we were kind of brainstorming and I want to get your thoughts on this. TCP IP really changed the game back in the 80s. For, for networking, And sure. brought in yeah. networking, brought in Cisco, created internetworking and all that goodness and the internet all came on top of that. What is the equivalent, and do you, are we in that kind of shift or ERP. double? It's ERP. And I, 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 I think I actually mentioned this in my keynote, maybe I overlooked it. But what we're doing right now is, is exactly, the, if you'll go back and look at the value that was created for companies, for the ecosystem layer, and certainly um, for individuals. When, when ERP in the early 90s really began to be able to change the process workflows and the value prop for the enterprise, and how they took orders, processed orders, managed inventory, planned manufacturing, and how they drove financials on a consolidated basis, and the value that was created. There's an interesting stat that I believe Peter Goldmacher from Cowan put out. It showed that the, the top 15% of companies in their industry who embraced ERP first outperformed the S&P by something like 35%. The same paradigm is happening right now and the same exact parallel with big data driven by Hadoop. But with, with ERP, the early adopters got to standardize some administrative processes and, and some sort of manufacturing related ones in, in those verticals, and, and that created shared services and efficiency. Um, but Hadoop, um, by deployment, by workload type, gives you a new data platform, mm -hmm. but what it's is new it, data architecture okay. is really the way to think about it. It's okay. a new tell data us, architecture. Tell us the distinction and, and, so and you how that. So you can go optimize certain cost points in other areas, and in other areas you can actually change your business model and how you do analytics and how a company interacts with or has visibility or insights into either their customer or their supply chain. Okay, and you supply the enabling technology. How thin or thick is the value add on top of that to deliver that solution? In some, ca it, it, in, in, in some cases it's very thin, and others it's very thick. Some are driven by us, some are through the ecosystem and the partners. And I think that's what's, that's what's really the, the, the really powerful thing, is there's a whole next generation of apps that are being built that can take advantage of this next generation data set. I love the ERP example. Okay, and I also love the TCP because I'm a networking guy too. But it enables this different levels of enablement. So let's take ERP. That was, and we brought up on the cube earlier, and I didn't even hear the comments, so it's kind of good that we're on the same page there. But the, let's talk about how long it took to do that. I mean, that was a gravy train. Deloitte and Touche, back Anderson Consulting, back in the, the big six accounting firms. That's right. Of course, HP Sun all sold servers and mini computers at the day, but like, I mean, they made a boatload of cash and it took years. It, and, and years for, and to for big implementations and get value. And what's, and what's the timetable now? So compare and contrast, because that's a good yeah. example. Time to value on ERP, time to value now. Yeah, ERP, ERP value tended to be years in some cases, depending on how big, but usually nine to 24 months or more, depending on how big and, and complex. That's the great thing about, from a Hadoop standpoint, many, many, many of these proof of concepts saw ROI or, or, or at least uh, IRR in, in you know, four to six months, right? Yeah. And, real and process change, real not just like you know, small little POC. Well, well it may start with cost yeah. optimization, but then through that they learn how to, how to go through real process change or a fundamentally different way to interact with their supply chain or partner and that, that could be accomplished in months. I got to ask you the, the, um, the startup question, ecosystem question, competition question. You're an um, entrepreneur, great competitor, um, great strategist, you know, watching you guys make your moves has been fun. Um, 
But now with the, sh the shift happening, inflection point, it's a land grab for the big boys, right? And the no ecosystem doubt. has to fit into that. There's some drafting going on. Certainly the big guys will take their share. Some will go out of business. Some will stick around. As John Chambers said, be disrupted or be the disruptor. How do you compete? If you're a startup out there, this white space to play in, you got to land on a narrow position, sequence to a broader position. How do they do that? What, what advice would you give them? What do you see? How do people stay alive to fight another day, generate cash? What's your, what's your take on that whole? It, it is a land grab, there's no doubt. But it's also, uh, we're, we're at a point where the opportunity is there to create value and, and to have a very definitive value proposition. And to, and to be very, very focused on knowing what space that you're focused on and what are the problems you're solving, what's your model that you're going to go do that within, and what's your value proposition around it. Yeah, like Traceda, I'll be meta. He's no outside funding. He's got a great business, fraud detection, retail. He's deep in expertise. Right. That's hard to duplicate. It is very hard to duplicate. Uh, and that was a, a question I wanted to ask. If you generalize from that into the, ca the classes of partners that would take this new data architecture and apply it to specific solutions that deliver that sort of value. What do those partners look like and, and sort of where are they growing up from? Well, you're going to see some that retrofit existing applications to leverage a, a broader data set driven by Hadoop. Or you're, and then you're going to see uh, others that are just going to extend their existing platforms leveraging Hadoop to bring more data, exponentially more data under management, make that transparent. You've already seen that movement happen. What, what you're going to start to, and, and, and we're seeing it today, is there's a whole next generation of applications that, that are emerging that, that will be leveraging Hadoop as a platform to do next generation analytics. Uh, that'll do next, and, and then you'll see the same thing occur for more horizontal and vertical based applications. An example of that's going to be, you'll see a whole next generation of supply chain that's happened. You know, when you look at the, the traditional enterprise based apps that are based on pure transactional data, and again, supply chain's a great example yeah. of that. What Hadoop does is it allows the, the enterprise to change their business model from being able, from, from being post-transactional, from being reactive post-transaction to being interactive pre-transaction. That's what Hadoop principally gives a shift in model. But the guy and, who... And, and those applicate next generation applications will be the ones that now can be interactive yeah. pre-transaction versus the old school enterprise apps of... But the executive who writes that check for that value, who's reaching him? Is it you in conjunction with this new class of partner? Is it the new partner? Like, like with ERP, it was you know often the Accentures that went in and said you know we'll re-engineer your back office processes. How do you? It's it's but, not the IT POC. Mm -hmm. It's the head of digital who is often in a different organization. Or in some cases, it's the CMO. Oh, yes. Right. And yes. in this case, it's the CMO that they want to get a 360. They want to consolidate all the channels of interaction that they have with their with their customers and consolidated in a 360 degree view. Another very big and powerful use case is where you have a very distributed enterprise and they probably have at this point multiple instances of ERP and therefore financials and therefore GL and they want to consolidate GL into one common system of record. And they're leveraging Hadoop as that aggregation point. Right? So we're seeing a refactoring of of many enterprise apps, but at the same time, a new generation of applications emerging, and in other cases, refactoring of those enterprise apps with, with Hadoop. So it's yeah. just, that's why we're so excited. It's yeah, there's a, a lot of, this, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of torn emotionally because my prediction was consolidation in the Hadoop space, which you kind of look back over my shoulder here, you'll see it's not consolidating, it's jam packed. <laughs> However, the trends are shifting to an inflection point. I think that's a nice crystallization because that is a shift and an inflection right. point at the same time, which is a unique point of the curve, right? So I want to get your thoughts on where we are right now. Just some highlights from the keynotes. You said you compared Hadoop progress to where our, our, DMS, our DBMS was five years ago, but much faster on-ramping. Five um, years into RDBMS. Five, I mean, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Hadoop is the progress is to where our, our DBMS five years in. 
Yes, so we're five years in, equivalent. So full pedal to the metal adoption on ramping, faster acceleration compared to that. And, and what, the, what the Gardner data told us was that today, if, I'm, if I remember the numbers correctly, 26% of the uh, enterprises that they surveyed uh, are, have already made some form of an investment in, in Hadoop, and then enough, another roughly, it was either 12 or 14% in the next 12 months we're going to go, and then another 7%. I think, it, I think it actually is accelerating faster than that and will yeah. accelerate faster than that. But what that says empirically, if you lay that if you lay that adoption rate per Gartner over the Jeffrey Moore crossing the chasm and early adopters, yeah. early majority, it, what it, it says is... It qualifies is, quantitatively as a crossing the chasm moment. We, we, we have crossed the chasm yeah. moment, and we're, in the, and we're yeah. in the very beginning phase of the early majority, and well, that's we'll compare where, the Gartner data to, to our data, but we'll get that's a whole huh. different segment. What, um, yeah. what would you call that bowling alley, the one that get that the application that got you across the chasm? If you had to pick one, because he always says yarn. bet on one. What? Yarn. Yarn. Yarn transformed the Hadoop architecture, and okay. it, it exploded the value that Hadoop brings because it was not constrained to batch, platform, okay. single data set, single application. It opened it up to be able to bring all data sets centrally and being able to, to, to bring simultaneously batch interactive in real time. And in simultaneous with that, driving the security innovation, driving the governance innovation, bringing all the operational capability through Ambari and to be able to operate it at scale. So, some of us talk about commoditization, we talk about it all the time, a commodity, open source, yeah. it's all open. You could argue commodity differentiation happens on top. So I got to ask you, your comment about putting Hadoop in the enterprise is like putting electricity in the home for the first time. So sure. much as possible, says Rob Bearden on the keynote. Absolutely. So let's talk about that. What does that mean in your mind? What do you mean by that statement? I mean, first of all, electricity, we all know what happens with the goodness you can read, it's good. But it's a utility. It's a utility at the ground level right. and what you do with it. it Expand it, on that right. thought. Well, and it, it's a great example that we use at Hortonworks a lot because it powers the art of the possible, right? Without it, the infrastructure can't work. But, but with that, you get refrigeration, heating, cooling, lighting, all the benefits and, that come with the creature comforts. Um, in addition to that though, it allows all the appliance manufacturers uh, to innovate and leverage that utility to, to, to bring on refrigeration, to bring on right. a stove, right? Uh, to, to, to bring on cooking so devices. So follow up question I want to ask you is a debate that we have, and this answer is no, no answer, uh, right answer, depending on your perspective, it could be either way. Analytics, a process or a product? Oh wow. Uh, it's a product that rationalizes pr uh, and makes a, a process efficient. That, good, okay. What do you think, George? Um, you think a process or product? Well, there's, there's no answer, because you could argue both sides yeah. of, the, of the coin. I was, yeah. I was wa wanted to go down a, well, a related line of thinking, which is Hadoop has, uh, has sort of fostered a, an ecosystem of innovation that we certainly in data management we've never seen before. Right. But the, the flip side of that is, it's hard for the vendors to get their arms around all the, to turn that ecosystem into a coherent product. And that exposes some complexity, along with the innovation, to administrators and developers. How do you grapple with that, you know, it's good on one hand and it's, uh, you know, it's a challenge on the other. Right. Well, what we can't afford to do right now is slow down the innovation, and that may, that's an obvious comment, because we, we want to continue to drive it forward. What, what we must do, what we must do, is bring predictability to the, to the tech and the release and, and landing. One of those mechanisms is through ODP, right? And how we have a common core that everyone, and that's the whole purpose of ODP is to have a common core that the ecosystem very reliably and predictably can certify their fill in the blank and yeah. it will run across it's the gravity others. for everyone to do SLAs. I mean, IBM, HP, these guys, they have big customers that don't move as fast as some of the code right. revisions in open source. So I can see the rationale there. So my question is, is ODP a yarn-like effect? Is it going to coalesce and galvanize 
and create some gravity around that flywheel? We, we have work to do, and if we do our work correctly, it can, but we must execute it. And the, and the, and the, the, the uh, uh, ODP consortium is uh, it's very important. We continue to, to add value, and we continue to, to, to drive the you certifications. You feel good about it right now? You I'm feel sorry. good about ODP right now? I do, I do. I think it's on the right track. I think the right commitments are there. But it's like anything. We, we, we have to, to, to continue to execute. I think the other things, George, to go back to your yeah. question, is uh, while, we got it, well, while we're innovating, we must provide better tooling. Right? And, and it's going to be very important that we provide tooling to, to create better ease of use, more simplicity, uh, more predictability. Make it very intuitive to interact with the, with the platform and the tech. And that's, that's our responsibility as a community to do, and certainly from a Hortonworks standpoint, we take that as our obligation so back to like the community. You're wrangling all the projects around, you know, a UI for administrators, maybe a UI, a be, you know, a better UI for developers. And we want to see Embari be able to do yeah, things that, I, that, that, yeah. that, that, uh, that evolve it and, and make, for example, an upgrade cleaner, faster, simpler. Okay. Uh, and there's just, very little to have to think about or do, and do it all in real time. I have to ask about Spark, because by sure. design it's integrated, and sort of each piece reinforces the other pieces, and um, it looks like the uh, Databricks is actually trying to abstract it to the point where you, I you interact with all the different workloads with a GUI, you know, and the platform disappears. Um, very immature, you know, many years behind in terms of hardened how does it fit in when you talk to customers, you know, with with your use of Spark yeah. and and the Hadoop, you know, ecosystem? We're a big fan of Spark. We embrace Spark fully. We just had some releases out uh, this week that, uh, that that fully embrace Spark. It's part of our enterprise stack, um, and and it and it and it is that because of Yarn and and we, that it's. Okay. It's completely integrated, and we put a lot of hard work into making sure that that's an enterprise quality uh, integration, and it's interoperable with the rest of our stack uh, via Yarn. Yeah. And we're we're super uh, excited about being part of the, the Spark community. Okay. Rob, I got to ask I got to ask the public IPO question. Being a public company, um, you look younger. I mean, <laughs> you're looking. I mean, you have new logos coming. You had one quarter, you know. And then you had some great quarter last quarter. Um, we heard a lot of logos this quarter, so mm -hmm. performance-wise, great changes. Mm -hmm. Looks like the inflection point's coming. Um, take us through the, that that journey for you and the company. I mean, you're out in the open in the open source. Now you're out in the open as a public company. Right. Um, what what should Wall Street investors understand about HortonWorks around the ecosystem, about your business model, about this world we're living? Because it's not a cut and dry with a red hat for Hadoop. Right. You could argue that's a simple bumper sticker, but what is the story <laughs> for you guys? Yeah, well, it, 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 it's about our uh, our position in the Hadoop community, without question or doubt, and and it's about Hadoop being transformational into the next generation data architecture, and the growth that's going to come inevitably from that, and uh, and and participating in that growth with us as an investor. What? And, and so that's a, that, that, that's the answer to the how the investors should think about. But why why this was important? I think is the yeah. fundamental question, and that we are we knew we were coming to this inflection point. It was very clear to us that it was happening. And is the enterprise is going to make a very big next generation data architecture bet? It's going to be very important to them that they not only have the transparency through open source on the tech. But through the public market, they have the transparency financially of where the company is and where it, what its financial model is and how it's progressing against that financial model. Oh, and and, and it, it brings, I think, a high degree of validation, not only to the company, but to the space and the tech. Yeah. And that, that this space and this tech will generate, I think, multiple public companies because it's such a massive opportunity yeah, it's electricity. and value creation. It's electricity. Yes. I mean, if you think about the growth prospects, I mean, if I'm an investor, I'm like not that sophisticated, not in the weeds. Where's the growth? Okay, inflection point, you can talk about that. I like that, electricity is good. Then you go, okay, product, ecosystem, it's open source. It's not going away, right? So I think, right. I mean, I think that's interesting. And I think, talk about the successes now. Products and, and customers. 
what's coming out of the customers that you're talking to? What is the big customer, because the market's in charge, or the mar market's the teacher, right. as we always say, right? So what's going on in the market with the customers? Well, na now they're very focused on how we can go get as much data under management as fast as possible, because, and, and this, this sort of changes as you move up the early adopters mm -hmm. to the early majority, it changes a little bit in Are priority. They pulling it from existing systems or new sources? Both. It's, it, it, okay. it, it's in some cases optimizing certain irrationalized data sets, but it's about then bringing the new paradigm data under management. The clickstream data, the mobile, the social, okay. all, the, all the new paradigm data sets. Bringing that under, because by having that under management, they've learned there's tremendous value and how to get that value very quickly, and it's incredibly leverageable. Right, and they see opportunity to bring new apps on board and to change how they interact with their customers and their supply chain. Right. You mentioned, we mentioned earlier John Chambers' last keynote speech at Cisco Live yesterday. Interesting thread he took was, and then, you know, he's obviously got the historic view of the industry being at Cisco over the years, is that the shift with data is so significant because the, the everyone uses the Uber, Airbnb, and all these startups, but the, what the competitive advantage that they have is they use data, and they use the connected mobile connect consumer, Try. and the data is the competitive advantage. So we just talked to Pivotal earlier, their thought was, everyone's moving to get the data in, so that reinforces your message there, and then from that point, it cannot be locked in. It cannot be moved into proprietary tooling Right. That's, this is, that's this why is an all open source model is imperative to, 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 to this space not fracturing. So what's next? What's going on for you guys? Tell us the next earnings preview. Give us some insight from of course. Oh, you know I can't <laughs> do that. But, uh, but I tell you what, what we're seeing is a big move that sort of triangulates the last question too. We're, we're seeing now, and it got, one of the slides on the keynote, did IoT help Hadoop flourish? Or is Hadoop help IoT force. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because there's massive value at that intersection, right? Yeah. And so what it's done is it's fueled both, and I think you're going to see very, very significant opportunities um, for us and many others in the, in the IoT space in general. And I think then, the IoT is huge. I, was just, I interviewed the uh, CEO of Aruba Wireless. Oh, wow. Um, right. They just got bought by HP, and I asked him you know, the question about they fund, they did the uh, Levi Stadium wireless. Right. Which they do six second replays after a touchdown to every from every camera angle to the app on the phone. It's amazing. And I said, "What's the, what's this mean?" Because I was like trying to bring the t t you know car driving Apple Watch kind of metaphor. And he says the difference is the network is interactive, not passive. Yeah. So you can apply that to data. So you were saying earlier that is really the interactive of the data. I mean, free transaction. Right, in, in our world with data, in real world, the enterprise, we now can let them shift to an interactive with their customer before, at the moment, an inst at the certain instant moment, they detect that there's even a hint that they want to go into a transactional mode or an evaluation and mode. The and they can yeah. then shape it, influence it into yeah. the right configuration, the right product mix, probably at a higher margin, and by the way, we have many customers doing this in real time today that have ROI that are that are absolutely incredible. You know why powerful. I'm so excited to be covering the space every show we hear is that every day, every year it gets bigger and better and as soon as we like we'll be like on, you know, in East Levi Stadium. But when you think <laughs> about like the real world implications, you mentioned the healthcare, Levi Stadium, drive self driving cars, the data precision at real time cannot has to be five nines. So ROI is already built into a self-driving car. If it doesn't work, it crashes. Right. If someone doesn't get the healthcare information time, someone's live is at risk. Right. So now you're getting into the real world examples. And to me, I think as you know, someone looking at the opportunity would be like, this is so early geeky, still geeky phase. It's got a long way to go. It, it, it does, but there's so much, uh, so much downstream opportunity that, that it, it, it is going to absolutely happen and happen in a very big way. All right, we're getting the hook here. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm getting the hook from the, from Leonard. <laughs> Don't throw water at me. Uh, Final word, share with the folks out there what's going on at the show here, Who people who aren't here, what's the quick summary of the, the vibe, content, summary? It's a, it's a great, it, it's, if anything to be wanted, you want to understand or know about Hadoop, you can come here and find it. Uh, the, the partners are here, the track, 
with the content about anything and the technology you want to know about is here. Any of the vendors who provide value or solutions around Hadoop are here. Um, and all the key people in the community are here. All right, Rob Bearden, the CEO of Hortonworks here inside the Cube, sharing his perspective. Busy day for me, stuff on stage, giving the keynote. We're at an inflection point in the industry, enterprises adopting in spades. Uh, that's my words, like not his, but electricity is out there. That's the Hadoop. Great stuff here in Silicon Valley. We'll be right back with more after this short break.